JFT just fair and direct. Good morning everyone and welcome to JFD's daily market review for July the 8th. I am Harlambos Pissuros, Senior Market Analyst here at JFD and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds to read the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the dollar traded higher against the majority of the other G10 currencies on Tuesday and during the Asian morning Wednesday. It gained the most versus NOC, AUD, the Canadian dollar and the euro in that order while it underperformed only against the pound. The greenback was found virtually unchanged against the Swiss franc and SEC. Now the strengthening of the dollar and the franc combined with the weakness in the Aussie suggests that trading uh, switched to risk off. Indeed, turning our gaze to the equity world, we see that major EU and US indices were a sea of red. That said, things improved again somewhat during the Asian session today. Although Japan's Nikkei 225 slid 0.75%, China, Shanghai and Composite gained another 1.40%. The catalyst behind the switch to risk off appears to have been a blend of developments rather than just a single event. The first hit came af after uh, the Australian state of Victoria announced a renewed six-week lockdown in Melbourne, the nation's uh, second largest city. Then the European Commission announced that it is uh, now seeing a deeper slump uh, than previously anticipated in this year's economic activity. Later in the day, with several U.S. states announcing uh, new daily records of infections from the coronavirus, Atlanta Fed President Rafael Bostic said that the crisis may go on longer than previously thought and perhaps outlast uh, current relief programs, while Cleveland Fed President Loretta Mester noted that the resurgence in coronavirus, in coronavirus cases is making consumers more cautious and thus more fiscal stimulus may be needed to help the economy recover fully. Now, with global infections and deaths from the coronavirus accelerating again, it's not strange why the aforementioned developments weighed on the broader market sentiment. It seems that following a decent winning streak, uh, some investors may have taken the opportunity to lock some profits. That said, until we see more lockdown measures being re reintroduced around the world, we would treat yesterday's slide as a corrective retreat. If data continues to suggest that the global economy is recovering faster than previously anticipated, we will see decent chances for equities and other risk-linked assets to rebound again. Now back to the currencies, the pound was the main gainer among the G10s and this may have been due to headlines that UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson is willing to reach an early trade deal with the EU. With a new round of talks uh, starting this week, his comments were cheered by GBP bulls who sent cable to, to a new monthly high. What's more, uh, Chancellor Rishi Sunak is due to unveil more spending uh, measures today, which may have also been a positive for the pound. Having said that though, later in uh, the day, Prime Minister Johnson provided the reality check to investors, saying that uh, although he remains committed in finding an early agreement, the UK is still ready to exit without a trade deal. In our view, the forthcoming direction in the pound will depend on uh, how this round of talks uh, undergoes. If indeed there are signs of progress, the currency is likely to extend its uh, recent gains. However, anything pointing to another deadlock could come as a big disappointment as it would leave well on the table the option of a no-deal Brexit. If no progress is made, the pound is likely to come under selling interest and conditional upon an upcoming rebound in investors' morale, it may lose the most ground against uh, risk-linked uh, currencies like the Aussie, the Kiwi and the Canadian dollar. Now, as for today's events, uh, the calendar appears uh, relatively light, with the only data worth uh, mentioning being Canada's housing starts for June and the, Ener and the Energy Information Administration weekly report on crude oil inventories. 
Canada's housing starts are expected to have accelerated to 198,000 from 193.5 thousand, while the EIA report is forecast to reveal a 3.114 million barrels slide after a 7.195 slump. That said, with the American Petroleum Institute report yesterday pointing to a 2 million uh, barrels increase, we would consider the risks of the Energy Information Administration forecast as tilted to the upside. Now, as for tonight, during the Asian morning Thursday, we have China CPI and PPI for June. The CPI rate is expected to have uh, ticked up to 2.5% year over year from 2.4% while the PPI rate is anticipated to have risen to minus 3.2% year-over-year from minus 3.7%. As for the speakers, we have uh, one on today's agenda, and this is ECB Vice President Luis de Guintos. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at 7 o'clock a.m. GMT time. You can find the link in the description below. So goodbye, have a great day, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again tomorrow. JFT, just fair and direct.